Hi, my name is Joel and I'm an artist. Welcome to my channel and uh, this is my very first video ever. I've been watching a lot of YouTube content, also looking through Instagram where I'm trying to get myself established and just see what strategies and approaches are already out there, see what I would like to do. So I'd like to start out first by talking about some of the avenues that uh, I've already looked at that I've kind of put on the shelf right now. I, I haven't totally abandoned them, but maybe I'll, I'll consider them long-term possibilities. I have a, a long history of traditional art. I've always liked to do pencil drawing better than any other form of art. Sometimes I, I doodle with pen, I took uh, classes doing oil painting, I've used pastels, all kinds of, of media. I've done some photography. I'm not going to continue down that road of traditional art for now. There's the expense of getting materials, storage space, so all these things after I put the work into them, maybe improper storage or an accident or whatever might happen, uh, all the work that I, I put into a piece, it can end up getting destroyed, lost. After I make the piece, there's always the, the cleanup. I, I think uh, about working with paints or pastels. And uh, after uh, I've enjoyed uh, putting the time into making this art, then there's work involved and that kind of takes some of the joy uh, away for me. I've been using the, the Procreate app and it's a very popular thing for established artists to sell their own brush sets. I'm not at a point where uh, I'm going to do that right now. And I don't know if I'll get to that point because there are so many brushes to choose from on the market right now. I really don't think it's necessary. I think the market is flooded and the, the tools that I have available, I, I think they're more than sufficient for the art that I'd like to create. Going back to traditional art, a common way that artists make money is to do commissions, whether it's um, people portraits, couple portraits, pet portraits. And while portraits have always been something that, that I've enjoyed doing, a big part of um, commissions as it relates to doing portraits, maybe not so much pet portraits, but people portraits, the likenesses have to be uh, pretty close. You need to be able to tell this is the person that matches up with the commissions. And it, it takes a, a lot of extra effort, I think, to, to capture that likeness. And for the amount of time and effort, I, I would want to get it right. I really don't see the value in my time to pour it into commissions. Another popular way to earn money as an artist is through Patreon. You like an artist, then you can sign on to do a regular contribution. Buy me a cup of coffee, uh, donate a dollar a month, something like that. The artist, they'll want to deliver some value. Maybe uh, someone gives a dollar a month or $5 a month, $10, however high it goes. Then the artist would release rewards equal to that tier maybe exclusive artwork, exclusive behind the scenes, work in progress. I've seen some that do those collectible enamel pins that are so popular. So since I'm at a very early stage, I'm still kind of figuring how things are gonna progress. I don't think that Patreon is something that I'm going to pursue right away. With all that being said, those things are put up on the shelf. What strategies am I going to pursue to maximize my income as an artist in 2023? I saw some of these Amazon KDP, the self-published books, and I've got to flip through a few of them for myself to see what's out there. And frankly, they're not very good. Sometimes they can just cut and paste art and get it out on the market as soon as possible. I would like to write and illustrate my own children's books, but I want to do the kind of books that I would give to my own children or that I would want to read if I were a kid. I want to pay forward that, that joy, that excitement, that sense of wonder 
I, I think an essential element of a good children's book is the, the creativity, the uniqueness, the idiosyncrasies. And so for someone just to copy and paste a book together, I think it's doing a disservice, putting, an, in my opinion, an inferior quality product out there just through the cut and paste process. I wanted to do my own children's book, self-published through Amazon KDP. I came up with a manuscript for a 32-page book. I did a layout, but I want to do it right. I started out with traditional media because that's what I was comfortable with just over the years, the tactile experience, pencil on paper. But I realized all the time to get it right, what I felt was right to put out a, a quality product. I said, if, if I'm going to kind of put everything on hold and focus on this book to get the product out there, it's going to be a long time before I, I see any income. And so I want to diversify those streams of revenue while not abandoning the book project. That's something I'm going to work on throughout the year. There are other things I'm going to prioritize. So the next thing is Instagram. One of the first things I did was to establish a presence on Instagram. I'm still getting used to the tools, the Procreate app, and just the experience of drawing on a screen rather than a sheet of paper. I dug into my archive, all my legacy work, and I was posting things gradually. This thing I drew with my kids a couple of years ago. This thing I drew 20 years ago. When you go on my Instagram, you'll see the variety in my work, different media, different subjects. When you're done with this video, check out my Instagram. Some of the content I posted on Instagram, looking at the analytics, it performed in terms of engagement far better than the others. And put simply, it was the reels. The algorithm favors the reels. There are short form videos. I had a series that I created. I call them the funny comic show. I started drawing them with my kids and it was just an exercise to see how quickly I could draw a comic strip, four panels on a sheet of copy paper. No emphasis was put on making a, a good drawing, but just on doing something fast. Bottom line was it had to be funny. I chopped them up to make different scenes in a carousel, putting the music on, they became reels. And one of them got over 2000 views as opposed to just an art post with my legacy of work that got maybe a good performing one was 20 likes. So in terms of engagement, exposure, how many accounts I would reach, reels are the way to go. And I understand that with high performing reels, Instagram offers paid bonuses. So that's something I'm going to prioritize. Still putting artwork out there on a regular basis, but kind of alternating it between static posts and reels and maybe some carousel posts in between. Now, while I was posting static posts, the legacy artwork, I was looking to see how I, I could further monetize the content, make it stretch as far as possible. And it came down to the IP or intellectual property. So what did I own versus what was fan art that Maybe I could get the rights to put on a t-shirt and maybe I couldn't. So if it was something like a crossover piece, um, I did one in January. It was a crossover with uh, the TV Detective Columbo and also the British TV series Doctor Who. So it was Columbo and the Doctor and I did it kind of a pulp style uh, poster with the uh, Columbo fonts up there to make it look authentic. The BBC logo down there as well. So uh, I put a lot of work into that, but it's not something that I could make any money on. It's just a portfolio piece. So I, I started brainstorming. I wanted more practice so that I could get better with the Procreate app, but I didn't want to create projects that I would just go down the rabbit hole trying to get every detail right, and it had to be my own work. One of the themes that I'm developing through my work is nostalgia, childhood, sights, sounds, flavors. So I had the idea of candy that I used to eat when I was a kid, like Bonkers, Big League Chew, Hubba Bubba, Starburst. There are all kinds of candies, but there were flavors that were common to a lot of these. So I made a list of all these candies. What flavors were they originally released in? 
and I came up with a few basic flavors. So just taking these one at a time, cherry was a flavor that was in seven of these candy products. And I said, I'm gonna do just a piece that is cherries. I'm gonna have sort of a, a wreath shape, a, a circular shape on that product. I'm gonna have a pop of color, the red with the cherries, and I'm gonna say cherry for the cherry flavor. And then just add interest to do something a little different. I found the Latin name for cherries and I put that underneath. So getting enough of these, I would have a, a selection of flavors and that was something that I own. Nobody could say, well, I own cherries or I own grapes. There's uh, a site that I discovered that I've seen many different artists use to monetize their work. It's called Redbubble. So I have a red bubble site, you can check it out. I have cherries up there, I have the grape flavor, I have orange, and some others I'm gonna be working on. So you can get, for example, this uh, picture of the cherries on a phone case, on t-shirts, bedspreads, uh, a clock, uh, all kinds of things. And then eventually I'm going to group them together and uh, get various flavors on, on one product. I also looked at some of my legacy work, such as the Vaporwave Water Buffalo. And I have that on Redbubble as well. So you can buy a print of that if you'd like. I really like the idea of monetizing my work because it's a way for me to create something that becomes a revenue stream. It keeps on giving. I look at some of my favorite authors over the years, whether they've written something or an artist who's created something in a book form. And you walk into the bookstore and year after year, they do reprints of this thing. And so they get an income, residuals. They, they keep on paying year after year. So I, I wanted to do a similar thing with creating the piece once in a digital form, posting it, and then using Redbubble to monetize it. I looked at a lot of different artists where they posted videos about how I made money as an artist uh, last year. And they broke down percentages and dollar values. And they, they looked at all their different streams of income. And consistently across all the different artists, YouTube, it accounted for the biggest percentage of their income. In the fall, I started taking YouTube very seriously. So since October, I've been making at least $700 in AdSense a month. So in April, my channel received 280,000 views and I made $1,442 from YouTube AdSense, just YouTube AdSense. The biggest income stream from last quarter was YouTube, which earned my business $13,488, which is nearly a $6,000 increase from the quarter before that. That includes YouTube AdSense and also sponsorships. So once uh, someone gets a thousand subscribers on YouTube and people have seen 4,000 hours of their content within a 12 month period, then they can start receiving income through a program called YouTube AdSense. This is part of the YouTube partner program. So what I'd like to do here is establish my YouTube channel. I'm going to be posting more videos about art. Things that I'm thinking about doing on this channel are delving deeper into my journey so far as an artist. How did I get started? What are the different styles and influences? Who are my favorite artists? What are my favorite artistic styles and inspirations? There are also some local artists and maybe I can give them more exposure, interviewing them and, and posting those on my channel, sharing those with you all. So those are my, my strategies for how I'm going to make money as an artist in 2023. I hope that this video was interesting to you, that maybe gave you something to think about, some inspiration and, and uh, thereby some value. Please subscribe to my channel so you can see the next videos I'll, I'll post and uh, give this video a like as well. Uh, if you wanna hit the bell, then that'll give you a notification when I post my next video. Well, thanks, and we'll see you next time.